In this video, we're going to discuss TCP IP flow control mechanisms. Now, we have discussed elsewhere in this course the acknowledgement process in TCP. You know that the receivers acknowledge the receipt of each frame, send an acknowledgement back to the sending station, and that the sending station waits for that acknowledgement before it sends more data. That way, you're assured that the data you sent was actually received on the remote end. Now, if you think about this logically, if you sent an acknowledgement back for every packet that was sent, that would be very bandwidth intensive and would cause lots of delays across the network. Because you can imagine you'd basically be doubling your traffic, and not really because that acknowledgement packet doesn't have a payload, whereas the traffic you're downloading or consuming from the server end does have the payload. But the concept still stands. You have to send an acknowledgement back every time. Well, TCP has a method to control this and it basically reduces the number of acknowledgement packets required in the TCP flow, and this is called the TCP window. And simply put, the TCP window tells the sending machine, the sending workstation, how many outstanding packets can be on the wire at any given time. And you'll see how that works in the next slide, and we'll actually pull up our Wireshark capture that I've included with the work files, and we'll see this in action. Now this TCP window starts out as a fairly small number, and this window can grow or shrink depending upon network conditions. And technically, when the window grows or shrinks, this is called a sliding window, meaning that if the sending station is sending too much data at one time, the receiving station can lower the window and say, hey, don't send me so much data all at once. It can slow down the download. And that's basically how quality of service works in this very basic level. And again, quality of service is well beyond the CCENT certification exam. But just a kind of a hint of what's out there if you decide to go down, especially the voice and video route. So let's use my pretty little diagram here because I love diagrams. I love graphical things. It makes me happy to see all the little pictures on the screen. So. We have the sending and receiving workstations here. We have the sender on the left-hand side and the receiver on the right-hand side. So we're going to assume that the negotiated window at the very first part of the TCP conversation is three. And again, actual window sizes are measured in bytes, which you'll see in the Wireshark capture here in a minute. But let's assume that the window that's been negotiated is three. And so the sending workstation sends the first packet, it says window size three, I'm sending one. Window size three, I'm sending two. Window size three, I'm sending three. But for whatever reason, network congestion or, you know, the receiving machine was too busy or whatever, packet three is lost. It just never makes it to the remote end. And so the receiving end says, okay, I'm acknowledging number three and my window size is two. Basically saying that I expect your next packet to be number three. Well, the sending end says, huh, well, I already sent number three. They obviously didn't get it because they didn't acknowledge that they got number three. So I'm going to resend number three and send number four. Now, you'll notice that even though this guy is still saying my window size is still three, you can send me three frames or three packets before I will send you back an acknowledgement. The sending machine only sends two packets at a time before it expects an acknowledgement. So since it sent its two packets, the receiving machine says, hey, I acknowledge number five, meaning that I expect you to send number five next. My window size is still two, and so on and so forth. Window size three, send five, send six. Hey, I'm acknowledging number seven, window size two, and so on and so forth. So let's look at this in Wireshark, because again, I'm a real big fan of just looking at the packets going across the network. You'll find a lot of interesting things on your network just by doing that. So this is the entire TCP conversation between my workstation that I wrote this particular slide deck on and one of the Ubuntu download mirrors. And I've narrowed it down to just the traffic between this IP address and anything else that it happens to see, which will be the machine that I'm downloading it on. So we'll see the entire conversation set up. There's the SYN, the SYNAC, and the ACK. That sets up the three-way handshake that we discussed a little earlier in the course. And Wireshark, since it knows pretty much what we're really interested in looking at, gives us all of the pertinent information right up here. You'll see this is an HTTP download of about the first 10 megs of an Ubuntu ISO. So you'll see that my workstation, when it sends the SYN, it says my window size is 8192, or about 8K. The receiving end replies back with its SYN ACK and says, hey, my window size can be as big as 14,600. 
And then my workstation replies back and says, well, great. Well, my window size is 66,780. So you see the window starts out very small and can grow to be very, very large pretty quickly. The remote end replies back and says, here's my window size, 15,744. And it pretty quickly settles on a window size of 66,780. And after that, you'll notice that the remote end sends two frames, or two packets, I should say, since we're not talking about Ethernet at this point. It sends two packets, and then my workstation at that point then sends back an acknowledgement, and two more packets and an acknowledgement, two more packets and an acknowledgement. And this goes on for quite a while until we get down here to about packet 421. And I scrolled down a little bit while I was paused, just so you wouldn't have to sit here and watch the packets fly by. You'll notice that the Windows 66780, and then TCP decides, well, after a little while, you know, I can have more data coming across at a given time. So I'm going to up my window size to 229.320 from my workstation. And you'll notice that that goes on for a while. The window size grows and shrinks until very far down in our packet capture here, we start getting duplicate acknowledgments for whatever reason. I'm not really certain what exactly happened, but, you know, this happens when you are downloading files from time to time. You notice that the window size still is the same, 262080, so it makes it past all of that. And then the further down you scroll, you'll notice that the window size suddenly drops right about here. You'll notice that the window size dropped from my workstation. Basically, that's my workstation's way of telling the remote end hey, I can't handle all this data right now. I'm having to write it out to disk. My IP stack can't handle it. Don't send as much data at one time until you hear back from me saying I've acknowledged it and I can handle more data by use of the TCP sliding window. And of course, if you go all the way to the bottom of the file, you'll start to see all of the send resets where I cancel the download because I really didn't want this ISO. So basically what's happening is the remote end is sending data to me and I'm sending back reset requests saying, hey, the connection's been reset. I'm not accepting it anymore. And this goes on for a little bit. And then finally the connection just drops. And again, you've got this entire file in your work files. So you can poke around in there and learn all the deep, dark secrets of how I've got my network laid out. And that concludes our discussion of TCP IP flow control.